Uh, so, so yesterday the UN have, have called for an immediate ceasefire to the kind of Israeli bombardment of Gaza because of the ongoing humanitarian crisis in the region. You know, Gaza, I think we all now know, is the size of the Isle of Wight. It's got a population of two million. It was described by the UN as an open air prison prior to any of this that we've seen over the last 17 days. Um, I think we've got you know, 20 aid trucks a day managing to get into Gaza. Prior to this, it had 400 trucks a day. So this is a part of the uh, a part of the world that needs a huge amount of support, and it obviously is now on the receiving end of a staggering bombardment from from Israel. And then I think probably we would say, unfortunately, the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres then went on to and. It sounds a little bit like almost justify what happened um, on the attacks on the 10th of October when he said that this was the result of, you know, the kind of collective punishment of Gaza. Can I, can I read this? I think it's really important that we label this because Nick mm. and I were talking about this before we come on air and it's how you it's how you look at this. He said, and I quote, it is important to also recognise that the attacks by Hamas did not happen in a vacuum. He then goes on to say... The Palestinian people have been subjected to 56 years of suffocating occupation. They have seen their land steadily devoured by settlements and plagued by violence. Their economy stifled, their people disgraced and their homes demolished. Their hopes for a political solution to their plight have been vanishing, said uh, Guterres. Then he said, but the grievances of the Palestinian people cannot justify the appalling attacks by Hamas and those appalling attacks cannot justify the collective punishment of the Palestinian people. Um... I would respectfully suggest that he hasn't read the room too well, Guterres, in well, terms of how that speech was structured. I, th I think I'd agree. But... The priority needs to be, you know, ensuring that the people of Gaza get the aid that they need. Yep. You know, the 50% of the population are children. You know, this is an incredibly vulnerable population and mm -hmm. we need to ensure that those people are kept safe. And I think, I think, you know, by kind of undermining the argument for the ceasefire, you know, we've, I think we've seen that Israel are kind of held off with their ground invasion, mm -hmm. thanks mainly to the interventions from the US. Um, but we need to ensure that that, that, that Kind of th that does continue. I, I would respectfully suggest, which should probably go down like a lead balloon, that Guterres should concentrate on making his organisation more effective because the UN was actually useful. Maybe there would be less sort of stuff like this in the world going on. Mm. I think it's really, really difficult to, yeah. to, to pontificate mm. from the side. And I guess when we've spoken to people who've, you know, the mother whose son's been kidnapped, statements like that, I don't know. And mm. just a warning for those who are watching on TV, there will be some um, disturbing images, so please do watch those at your discretion. Absolutely. Um, it's semantics, diplomacy. Yeah. People on one side might say, well, actually, no, we should be discussing more that the plight of Palestinians and the history yeah. of this, but is it appropriate to bring it up so soon after the attacks on, on October the 7th? I think this is the point, isn't it? Wherever you stand in this conflict, which has been going on you know, for decades, obviously, people have very strong views about Israel and about Palestine, but it seems that this does seem like a bit of what about three, doesn't it? And, you know, I think the Israelis have a real right to be aggrieved with this. You know, it almost seems like, and, and I know he sort of, he sort of, know he sort of caveated it at the end, but it did almost seem like a bit of a sort of quasi justification for the attacks that happened on October 7th. It's a problem with the ceasefire, obviously, as well, is that politicians across the world are treading this massive tightrope because, on the one hand, you can call for a ceasefire. But it doesn't really marry up with also saying that Israel has a right to defend itself. It's almost one or the other. And so it's an incredibly difficult situation. Obviously, everybody wants civilians to be saved in this. But I think that the way people go about articulating this needs to be really, really careful and measured. And I think it'd be interesting to see how um, the messaging from our Prime Minister and Keir Starmer will change over coming weeks. Mm. It certainly has really changed bad. since the first mm. week. The messaging is different. Mm. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot more sympathy for the Palestinians, etc. And I think as that death toll continues to rise in Gaza, we will possibly see a shift in public support for the, mm. you know, Israel yeah. has a right to defend itself no matter what. Do you know what nobody says, though? We were talking but about no this yesterday. That. Is is I don't believe your average Gazan person wants to be uh, under, under the umbrella of Hamas. And I absolutely will stand by calling those terrorist horrors genocidal, stand by Israel's right to, 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 to defend itself. But also, more than anything, no more loss of human life, this is going to not, not happen again unless Hamas is taken out. And the point of this whole debate is how is that done in the most effective way for yeah. humanitarians, for world peace, for a escalation in the Middle East? Um, I just think Guterres... I, I think it's very easy from the cheap seats. And the, I'm not a great fan of the UN because I don't think it achieves as much as it perhaps should do. But, but look, Nick's right, it can be taken in many different ways. I think I would like to think that most people in the world would want the same thing. 
you know, I've, 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 I've been very strongly in favour of, of the Jewish side because I've, I've got lots of Jewish friends. That doesn't mean that I don't understand that there's suffering on the other side. And I think that everybody wants Hamas to be destroyed, I think, on both sides. Yeah. However, while protecting civilians, it's incredibly difficult, obviously, because Hamas embeds itself within the civilian population. Yeah.